Hundreds of years after their creation, instruments crafted by the Cremonese masters continue to serve as subjects of scientific study. Research about materials, methods of construction, and the human touch help us understand our history and the role of human action in sound production. My name is Greg Alf. I'm a violin maker, and I live in Venice, Italy. Part of, I think, the reason that we love old violins is because they represent our, our cultural heritage of where we've come from as violin makers. And for me personally, I feel a part of that. I, I love old violins. But I'm really into the science um, and into making them better, even better in the future. Arizona scientist Andrew Ellicott Douglas developed a technique of tree ring dating called dendrochronology during his work at the Lowell Observatory in Flagstaff. Douglas sought to better understand the relationship between sunspot cycles and Earth's climate patterns, which is subsequently reflected in tree ring growth patterns. Today, researchers have found ways to apply the analysis of tree ring growth when comparing the front plates of historic violins. We can take the top wood of the instrument and know when the tree was cut. Or we can identify a, um, a certain tree ring right at the edge of the instrument, which we'll know is the latest growth, and we knew that we can say for certainty that um, this tree um, was living at a certain date. But uh, more than that, we can also learn of where, what forest where the wood was grown. And um, with the Prince Dory, it's interesting. You can see that the tops um, were not book matched. They were not split from one wedge and like modern violin makers. And um, we can even learn probably how the wood was transported or from seeing different makers that had other parts of that same tree. Um, we can see where the, the trade route was for those, you know, for that, for that, for top tone wood, and actually learned quite a lot uh, about the trade of violin making in the 1700s just from a scientific study that we do today. In addition to tree ring dating, scientists use a variety of approaches to understand how violins vibrate when played and the exact physical dimensions of each instrument. 3D scanning is one such technology which allows today's violin makers a precise look at the structure and sound of the instruments that they seek to emulate. In the scanning that we're doing today, we'll reproduce the um, arching um, qualities of the Prince Doria to the wavelength of light. It's a very accurate scanning. Although science and technology lend us insight to the history of violin making, creating a great instrument is still intrinsically tied to art and craft. I think it's all about um, really honoring and respecting our, our colleagues from the past. It's very reasonable and very valid to use scientific methods to learn, and, and not just science, but also artistic just appreciation and uh, love of the instruments and talking with the string players and listening to how string players play to really get what a, a great classical Cremonese instrument is. So we can listen to that and use our knowledge of what they are and try to make them even better. That's what, for me, makes violin making exciting.